All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, Play Fest Football. Today I'm going to look at uh, using tight end flanker sets on offense, and I'm going to look at the one that's been uh, at least the last couple years, the one that's the most prevalent. Obviously, it's not the only one, but I'm going to look at the one that uh, I've seen on offense and we see when we play defense the most, the most prevalent one of those, and I'm going to go through why I think they can be so effective. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company, we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them uh, at the last two high schools that I've been at. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrike. Great customer service. They're always there. If you have an issue, give them a call. They'll return your call right away. So make sure you check them out. Dome Hats, headwear company we use with Bishop Kenny High School, uh, Play Fast Football. This is one of our fitted custom BK Crusader hats. All right, so they make completely customizable hats. You can go online and build your own hat. They have a two-week turnaround now. They're doing a lot of great things. If you want customizable hats that you can design, different all right, style hats, fitted, Velcro, snapback, different embroidery, different logos, make sure you check out Dome Hats. All right, Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for coaches' gear, our sideline gear, practice gear, player spirit packs. Our uniforms are distributed from them. They're in the shoulder pad uh, market now with pro gear stuff. So um, make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods, your one-stop shop for everything you need for your entire program. Just Play Football, which is the playbook software we use. We use it, uh, their presentation mode in our team meetings. We use it in our installations. I draw uh, in their playbook software with their drawing tool on my, excuse me, Patreon site because I think it's the best play drawing tool on the market. So make sure you check out Just Play. And then Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about teaching somebody how to hold a bag, how to provide leverage. You don't have to worry about injuries with a player that's just holding a bag. They attach right to the racks in your weight room, in season, off season. Work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up. If you want to strike violently, you have to practice striking violently. Make sure you check out Difference USA. So one of the things that makes uh, tight end flanker sets, to me, so effective is when you're pairing them with two speed receivers away, right? So in the old days of 21 personnel, you'd have tight end flanker sets, and um, you know obviously the game used to be played in, in a little bit tighter window, uh, you know, kind of almost in a phone booth with 21, 22 personnel. Not that there's teams that don't do that anymore. That's not what I'm saying at all. But the most prevalent one that I've seen and we're seeing more and more on defense is when you're pairing tight end flanker away from two speed. Now, why do I think that that's the best one to use? Because it is playing with the rules of the defense. So in today's game with 11 personnel, 10 personnel, 20 personnel, all right, a lot of teams are playing more three safety defense, dime deep, or sorry, nickel defense, or they're playing Sams and recruiting Sams that can cover and be in space a little bit more, right? So the two speed kind of messes with the rules of the defense because they usually want to set the Sam or the nickel to the two speed, right? So if you look at your just traditional 4-2-5 front, all right, if you look at your traditional 4-2-5 front, or if you look at it from a split field coverage scenario, all right, so I think tight end flanker is a really good way to attack split field coverage teams away from twin sets because now the Sam or the nickel gets set to the two speed. They get set to what you would consider the passing strength, right? So when you do that as a split field coverage team, middle of the field open team, you now get left with certain conflicts on the backside. Because the tight end is there, all right, because the tight end is there, you kind of get caught in a world where it's a three-man surface. They have some run game that they can present to the tight end side. That means you're going to have to be able to set a good edge to that side of the defense, okay? You can't just invert a safety down like you would to a single side because the tight end, especially Y off, even if he's on, is a vertical threat. Right, so now if you've got a ball in the middle of the field and you've got a vertical threat attached and a vertical threat outside, it's almost hard or impossible to play some type of half field, midpoint type deal without getting hands on a one or without jamming or walling two out, funneling one in. It's very tough to do and then when the ball's in the middle, if you did choose to go to some type of cover two so that you can help, right, if you went to some type of cover two deal where you were going to put hands on one and funnel one inside to the safety, and then if two went vertical, the will would try and wall them to the safety to constrict all right, uh, uh, the passing windows or at least shrink them to where you say, all right, if they're closer together, it's easier to play a deep half concept. 
right? If I don't touch the number one receiver and he rips outside vertical and the Y rips down the seam and the ball's in the middle of the field, there's really no way you can midpoint that, right? So you can have your will linebacker possibly carry the number two, but the problem is in this front, the will linebacker has a gap to play. So if you're getting RPO'd and you're expecting him to carry two, you're going to lose a B gap fit. Right? So what it does is it kind of plays with the rules of the defense to set the SAM to the passing strength. And now that you know that the SAM is to the passing strength, the defense has to make their mind up of how they're going to handle the backside. Now, if they wanted to play a quarters theory, all right, in the quarters theory, depending on if it's true quarters, two to the flat is going to be played by a linebacker. So that's going to mean they might have to bump the backers, lighten the box up a little bit, because the will to handle two to the flat has to be in a position to do so. It's going to be real tough for the will to be a B-gap player and take two to the flat. So if they were a true quarters team, they're going to lighten the box a little bit, right? So that safety will be more involved in a run fit, but they are going to have to lighten the box a little bit. But also, if they're a true quarters team, that means if you've got a dude at number one, you can almost guarantee at the number one, you are going to get on a lot of your concepts, as long as you diagram your quarters beaters the right way, you're going to get a lot of man-to-man -man deals with a corner, right? So if you wanted to be a tight end flanker team and you put twins away and your flanker was a dude, all right, or I would put my dude at the flanker, so anybody that wants to play quarters, all right, now I'm going to get a lot of, if it's Press man, I'm going to get a bunch of good one-on-one -on -one looks. If it's off man, I can throw the ball to the flat because the backer with the ball in the middle of the field is tucked a little bit tighter to the run game, right? Or if they don't like that and they want to leave the box alone, maybe they have to lock it to the backside, right? So now if they lock it to the backside, now you're getting a world where it's man-to-man -man on the tight end, man-to-man -man on the single, man-to-man -man on the back, and then this safety has to be a really good player to understand how to support DGAP runs while still playing man, so it becomes something in high school that's very tough to teach, how guys play man to man. So if you got like arc releases, and this safety was running the alley, that looks like a vertical release to a safety. If there's no backer there to put hands on that, or there's no backer there for him to maybe block, because the backer's in the box, straight arc release looks like vertical to that safety. So now it's harder for him to get downhill on outside runs to support the edge of the defense if it's man-to-man -man because that looks like a vertical release, right? So if a team's played quarters, now the run game is going to shore itself up on the perimeter. So if, a, if teams decided to lighten the box and maybe they'll stunt the D-line and take away gaps and they bump a backer to play quarters, well now in the run fit it's easier on the safety because... Tight end arc release in the alley is probably going to have to put hands on a will. When he puts hands on a will, that clears up things for the safety. All right, but what it's done to the defense is now it's made the box light. All right, so into the boundary, they can get away with maybe playing cover two or maybe teams will even play palms into the boundary, right? Because now if it's into the boundary, they're okay with being able with two to the flat they feel like their safety can get to the top of one. When the ball's in the middle of the field, they'll almost never get a palms concept out there because with number two attached and the ball in the middle of the field, if two were to go to the flat, there's no way the safety can get over one when the splits are that full. So most all right, uh, split field coverage teams or middle of the field open teams, palms is their deal when two's removed, but if two's tight and one is, is got a good split with the ball in the middle of the field, you can't play palms to that because if two goes to the flat, the safety will never get to one. So maybe you have to kind of bastardize some type of quarter zone theory where it's you got the outside quarter, I got the inside quarter, we're going to be late to two to the flat. If we move the wheel, we're going to lighten the box, right? So what it does is, is it kind of messes with open field coverage, middle of the field open, split field teams. It messes with their coverage on the backside. Now, a lot of those teams are usually going to have answers. You've got to do your game plan. They're going to have middle of the field answers, and then their answers may be different to the boundary because maybe they're okay playing cover two to the boundary because the two verticals can be midpoint with only 16 yards of room over there, 17 yards of room, or they're okay with the corner being the force player and putting hands on one because they feel like the corner can support the run game into the boundary. Ball in the middle of the field, you got to make your mind up. 
right? So the thing you got to decide is if that's your structure, where am I leaving the open B gap? Because if I leave the open B gap to the speed side, now the Sam linebacker to the twin side is going to get RPO'd all day, so I'm going to have to have ways to game plan, manipulate the B gap to close it down, right? If I put the open B gap to the other side, what am I going to do with the coverage? The Will's got an open B gap to fit. How am I going to handle that tight end flanker on that side? Now, the other reason I think it, it, that you're seeing that version of it more and more is because the Y off is a guy that can do so many different things, right? So the Y off away from the speed. So 11 personnel, tight end flanker, even though he's off, that's still to me tight end flanker. It, it's in, in defense rules here, here's how you look at it. Two attached, two removed. Well, right here, I got a two attached. That messes with some of my rules on defense as a quarters base team or a middle of the field open team. I got to make, all right, some, some adjustments to how I want to play that. Now, the great thing about it is what happens is now the Y off is the guy that can travel, right? So in the old days, when I was playing college football, you used to see this set a ton, all right? You would see 11 personnel, Y on, Z off, okay, two by two formations. Well, now what you're seeing in today's game is you're seeing more Z on, Y off. Now, the thing that makes this so interesting is this is a guy that can now travel pre and post snap. So this is a guy that, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things that's come out lately is you're starting to see this fast motion where this guy's here, he's motioning inside, the ball's getting snapped, and he's ending up on the front side of the run scheme. So they're adding a body to the front side with fast motion. All right, in the zone game, the RPO world, you're starting to see the split flow stuff where he's a behind the line kick player. All right, he's either a behind the line kick player, okay, or he's a behind the line bluff player, or he's a behind the line flat release in the RPO world, right? Because he's off the ball pre and post snap, he can do a lot of different things, okay? The bodies that they're playing there in college and the NFL. He's the second rep when they go when teams go counter, right? When teams go counter, he's now the rap player on counter. Okay? When he's the Y off, it's a lot easier to run some of your bash or toss read type theories. Alright, so now you get in like the bash or the toss read world where now. It's a little bit more conducive with him off. I think it makes it easier to arc release and block scrape exchange or arc release and block the alley, right? So maybe you're getting in a world where you're trying to run some type of batch reads where you're working yourself, all right? However you want to do it, if you have to make sure that you can get the will blocked, if you are running like possibly GT counter away from the will, okay? So you're going to run GT counter away from the will to influence him. So you're going to do that and you're going to do that. But now you're going to go toss read, arc release him up to that safety. Now you're going to read that five technique. Now you've got the biggest constraint put on because the wheel is getting pullers in front of him. All right, so he sees two pullers going. And then at the same time, it's arc release to the safety. So if they get the toss play out here, if the five squeezes, now they've got two blockers on two players out there. So to me, the Y off is a better way to do all of that. Okay, and then because the Y is a matchup in the passing game, now you get all of your passing game deals that you love. Right, so right away the first thing I always learn that you gotta be able to handle is if they're giving you that type of set, all right, obviously those can be four verts at any time. All right, so the tight end flanker deal to me is such a good deal on offense when it's away from twins because it messes with the rules of the defense. If they set the Sam, all right, if they set the Sam to the passing strength, all right, now they're going to have some issues to the backside. Now, if they chose to set the Sam to the tight end, well, now you know you're going to get a lighter box because the Sam is normally an outside-the-box player, right? So you could look at it this way and say, hey, look, and I know we do this with our game plan on defense. They want to run the ball out of these sets, Okay, so we're okay. We're going to put the will outside the box to play palms because that's what the will would do to two removed in a 10 personnel world. So we're okay with that. All right, we're going to lighten the box a little bit. We're going to set the three to the will 
all right, because we want to take RPOs off the plate there, so we're going to close the B-gap. We're going to lighten the box with the mic. We're going to play the SAM outside, and we're going to play quarters defense because that's what the SAM is used to doing. So we're going to set the SAM to the tight end flank. All right, you could do that because on this side, this is how you would play 10 personnel anyways. So the will already is a player that has to do that, right? Well, now if they want to set the SAM there, now the offense, you've got a lighter box that you can attack. Right? And again, with that Y off, you've got so many different ways to do it. Right? You've got so many different ways that you can attack that lighter box right there. You can run some trap theories. Right? You can run, obviously, to the three technique, I wouldn't do it. But you could run your dark theories, isolation theories with read game. Right? There's so many different things that you can do. The tight end flanker makes rules tough on a defense. It's a two-by-two two set. It's a balanced set. But it's a body that's attached that makes our coverages different, all right? It makes our coverages different. And then at the same time, all right, it also puts a, a constraint on us. If we set the SAM to the field, we're limited in things we could do back here with our personnel. So a lot of times if teams are a field defense, their will linebacker doesn't play quarters. He's a box player. So if they set their SAM to the field of the twins, the will doesn't know how to walk out here. Right? The will doesn't know how to do that. So he can't walk out there. So the adjustment is lock man to man, and the will's got to play the back man to man. Right? And now you've got everything built in to where you can go vertical, under, rail, right? Because you're gonna get the will, uh, you're gonna get the will man to man, so you can run some type of, or you can even run like snag, you can run here to get the pick on the will, run the rail, get the corner out with the post. So tight end flanker sets to me, all right, are really good ways to play football with the Y off because I can carry all my read game. I can carry everything I want in the RPO world. I've got my bash theories. The Y is a receiver, so he can get down the field and do the things I need him to do. And it messes with how defenses set strength and how they play coverage. So again, like if I had a good flanker that I loved, and I wanted to be two by two, and I had a tight end that was adequate enough to serve the purpose of what I needed them to do. I would get into two by two this way because I think I can draw more man to man quarters deals out here than I can if it was two by two or, or two removed. All right, I think I can get more true man, true quarters where the corner gets less help. And now all I know it, it, I have to do is understand how to hold the quarter safety. What releases are going to hold the quarter safety so I can work the ball out to the sink? All right, so again, not that tight end flanker sets are new, right? They've been around forever. Pro eye football, you know, if you're going back to the old days and football was played this way, all right, under center, pro eye, however you want to look at it. Not the original way it was played, but the way most of us grew up seeing it played. If you're 50 years old, 51 years old, like I am. This is the way you used to see football play a bunch, all right? So tight end flanker was still a great set back then, but the spread shotgun version of it being back in the backfield, Y off twins out there has completely changed the dynamic. And I know for me on a defensive side of the ball, it really makes things an issue. It messes with some of your rules. And then each week you go in with a game plan, you have to understand, what do they try and do out of that set? What do they really want to get to? Are they doing that to you to run it to the tight end? Are they doing that to you to get the Sam to the field so that they can throw the ball the other way, right? So you've got to look at their tendencies, their game plans. Why are they doing it? What are they trying to do? But I can tell you right now from coaching defense, that set right there will mess with some of your rules, especially if you're middle of the field open. Now, you know, the defenses that are Ripley's match, maybe they don't have – as tough of a time with this because they're balanced, right? So if the defense is a rip Liz match and they're keeping six in the box and they've got a safety that can rotate down and they can play a nickel outside of that, all right, usually they play some type of press man in there and then they've got the free safety that they can spin however they want. Well, all right, so if this was looking at it from a defensive perspective, say Liz, weak safety down, right? So this is Liz, 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 nickels outside. Now they're going to carry two vert and you're going to play rip Liz match. Yeah, maybe it's not as big, uh, as big of a deal for them, but I know as a split field coverage team, I know for us, that set is something that we have started to see more and more and more of, all right, and it messes with our rules a little bit. We're a little bit different in the, you know, tight front, 3-3-5, three, three, 
uh, structure three high defense. So some of it is, is better for us and some of it is not. But I know from a back end standpoint, it really messes with our coverages when you put tight end flanker away from two speed receivers. All right, so hopefully this video helps you guys out. Uh, a lot of you guys, if you're my age or older, you already understand what teams do out of tight end flanker sets. All right, I just wanted to give you my opinion on the newer version of 11 personnel Y off. 11 personnel has been around for years and years and years, guys. It's not newer. The thing that's newer to me, and when I say newer, I mean last 20 years or whatever, because like I said, we were in sets like this when I was playing in college, but that guy was almost always attached and on the ball. He wasn't as versatile as he is now. So the why off with the versatile players, when you look at the guys that are in the NFL doing it and now the guys that are in college do it, they're a matchup problem. They're big enough to block. They can travel, all right? They can pull and be in the box in the run game. They can fast motion and become extra bodies in the run game, right? So tight end flanker away from speed twins is a set that really messes with people's rules on defense. So hope this video helps you guys out on an offense or defensive perspective. All right, when you're checking the video out, make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video or we jump on YouTube Live. I was on YouTube Live for an hour and 20 minutes last night. So if you want to jump on YouTube Live and ask some questions, when you turn your notifications on, you'll know when I'm doing that. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like or don't like the content. As always, leave a comment. I respond to every comment I see on my side. All right, hopefully everybody's into their season right now. Two or three weeks in, hopefully you're winning games. All right, good luck to everybody that's playing this week. Hope everybody's healthy. Hope the weather's good for y'all. And hope you all have a great weekend unless you're playing against us. You won't play well until you play fast. See you guys next time.